Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're going to complete a room from TriHackMe where we'll do some investigation for what we think is a ransomware attack. So the scenario says that you are now a SOC analyst for a managed service provider called TriNotHackMe. And the customer has sent us an email saying we need to investigate an event that occurred on Keegan's machine. So we now know the user is Keegan. And here's a date of when it happens, March I mean, May 16, 2022, the client noted that the machine is operational, but some files have weird extension. That's an indicator that maybe they're getting encrypted or they've been encrypted with ransomware. So the client is worried that there is ransomware attempt on Keegan's machine. So your managers task you to check the events in Splunk to determine if that's the case. So most of the time, if you do suspect that there's ransomware, you don't just leave the machine there. You actually unplug it. But hey, this is a capture the flag. So let's go ahead and try to investigate ransomware. This is very important even for us as attackers or people who like pen testing because we learn defense. What can we do to make sure that we defend our employers' networks? And here we go. You uh, use your attack box and then your instance is this. So if you go to try me and you start the room, I already started it. Here's the IP address. You can use the attacker uh, box or you can use your own VPN. There's a way you can connect to Triac Me. I hope you can figure it out. I'm using my own. So I'll just visit that IP address in my own Kali Linux machine. And it does take a few seconds for it to load. But the first time you go in Splunk, you notice that we have nothing there. If you go to search and reporting, that's where we can go and see the actual data within Splunk. And we are going to change this timeline right away to all time because this is pre-made data. So we want to make sure we can see, see it. We don't have any search. So let's just put a star for show us everything. This is a small instance. So this should show us the actual data. So a quick look at this. It does look like we do have a Windows machine. And from just looking at this, some of this might have been sent using Sysmon because I've set up Sysmon on my own lab environment. So I kind of know what this looks like. Okay. So we have some data. It looks like it's from Sysmon. What are the interesting fields that we have here? Computer name. We can kind of see how many computers were involved. So we have two different computer names. I mean, this is a lab, so they only have two machines. We might have more. Okay. Here's the event codes. Depending on which event code we'll be looking at, Windows has Windows event codes. All right. So we know we have Windows data. What are we supposed to be looking for? That's where we come back here. A suspicious binary was downloaded to the endpoint. What was the name of the binary? Uh, since we're using Splunk, there's multiple ways we can use this. We can lo look up the events in Windows where a file was downloaded, or we can just go and see. So let's see if image is already one of these. Was it to show us like the file that was installed as well? So let's look at this. We should have like image let's go to here this will show us more yeah image loaded or source image i want all of them this, this is like what will show us some of the executables especially if they were ran in windows so i'll check those let's go back here okay now that we added our image i actually ended up with all of them uh let's click on the first one that just says image these are the executables that windows has seen most of these are going to be normal, obviously, because they belong. For example, this is a normal path for Chrome, C program files, Chrome application. What I'm looking at is anything in the user space, like desktop, downloads, temp, any of those locations. Uh, that is also not part of the normal Windows. So, so far, um, these here, oh, wait a second. This one is in the temp folder. So I was hoping to actually search for this, but the image is C Windows temp outstanding gutter.x. They even use caps for us. So even though we were told to look for a file that was downloaded, I just looked at what executables have we seen? I don't know. I'm not an instant responder. <laughs> so don't quote me. I'm just using my general knowledge of this. So I'll click on this. I think that's the name of the file. Let's see what we have for it. Okay, yeah, this came from Sysmon. All right, so I think 
given that it's outstanding guarda.exe, we can actually track it down further uh, later if we wanted to. But this was loaded somewhere. I believe that's the name of the file. So for now, let me go test it out. Then we can confirm that suspicion that we have. Okay, so that was good. All right, so next, what is the address of the binary was downloaded from? So we're looking for HTTP. So we know that the name of the binary is this outstanding gata.exe. We don't know how they downloaded it though. Multiple ways we can do this. It's probably a faster way to do this. I see a bunch of this binary here. Can I check and see star and PowerShell? Did they use PowerShell to download this? Is, did they use Chrome? Oh, okay. So looking for that binary name and also putting PowerShell, I, I already see it right there. All right. So it looks like they use PowerShell to download it. That was, I don't know, luck. To... Okay, so I know that this is encoding because if you look right there, that's encoded text. It does say ENC there, so we can copy that. And if you look on revshells.com, if you were to generate a PowerShell, this is what it will look like as well. So we have seen this before, but it doesn't look like, I mean, it says for base 64, we have to the two equal signs there, but let's go to CyberChef and figure out. So let's do uh, from base 64 and also try to make sure that we decode it. So paste it here from base 64. All right, and that's encoded text, looks like. Decode text. Okay, it's not this one. Okay, let me remove the text that I can already read. So let's remove that. And now let's keep changing these until we find one that works. Okay. <laughs> So I just had a few texts in the front and that was actually causing it to not decode. So lesson learned. So now that we know that we can decode this and it was also encoded data, um, I can actually read this and I like this because this is giving me ideas. So set here the disabling uh, Windows Defender real-time monitoring. That's what this is doing. They're setting it to true. Then they're using wget. I thought they would be using like um, invoke web request or something and they're going to this ngrok which is like a front uh, front proxy pretty much to download the file and they're sending it out to the temp here then they're creating a scheduled task immediately name it outstanding gata.exe and it's going to be ex executing the downloaded file and this will be scheduled and it's also generating a system event id of this interesting okay and it's running a system okay so we know what, what this thing is doing what do they want us to do what is the address of the binary was downloaded from so this is the http and defang so we can say it's this whole url i hope i don't have to keep that okay so let me keep that one. Let me open another cyber chef so we can defang it. I mean, we can defang it by hand, but I think we should be able to just use our tools that we have. So it's faster. So here's a URL. Do we have a defang URL? There we go. So now we get the full thing. Oh, I don't think they want this last part here, the outstanding thing they just want the url like that hopefully yeah so i use cyberchef here to defang but I just use the defang one and give it the full url and it will do the defang for us what windows executable was used to download the suspicious binary enter full path well if we go to here wget out file so they use wget so let's go and find out what wget looks like in here oh actually it's powershell what am i thinking they use powershell.exe 
which called wget. So it should be PowerShell or wget. Which one do they want? Okay, it's PowerShell. Yeah. What command was executed to configure the suspicious binary to run with elevated privileges? Uh, they use the scheduled task. So it's going to run as system. So let's look for the actual command. If it's not that, oh, here it is. I don't know why I was uh, trying to use the decoded one. Here's the command line. They code the scheduled task exe, create that, and it's, they probably don't want the quotes. Yeah, they don't. So let me go to the beginning, remove the quote, and submit. All right. So we knew that from our um, basics for decoder here. We just want to make sure that we see the full command because here it just says skit tasks will actually call the binary itself. That's why this was not working. What permission will the suspicious binary run is? What command to run the binary with elevated privilege? user command line what what is this what permission would the suspicious binary run is into run a system what was the command to run the binary with elevated privileges let's remove that let's see can we see a better one? Oh, there we go i see it right here after just searching for the name of the binary uh the user was nt system oh gosh that's why i couldn't figure it out I, I was saying system, but here they have two letters. So it's NT system, then colon, the command line. So the command line, we already found it. The task name create. Okay, I think I'm, I'm getting it now. So now that we have that, and let's do an end. Let's look for uh, schedule task.exe actually. It's tasks.exe. Is there somewhere where that shows up? Okay. We got them. We got it. So our user is NT system and the command line that they are running is this. So we add NT system in that command here. All right. So the suspicious binary connected to a remote server. What is the, what address did it connect to? HTTP. So just coming back here and looking for the binary name. Uh, what interesting fields do you have that looks like it might be a URL, not keywords? Okay, none of these will show me what the actual thing was. Is there an additional field I'm missing? So let's go. We have 38 more fields here. It's not HTTP. Is it a query? Oh yeah, the queries will show, I'll, I'll, I'll check all the queries. Okay, now that I did that, here's my query name. Oh, that that's it. It's the same thing. Oh, that maybe that's a different one. So if you want to look for HTTP traffic, it's in this query name and query results and query status. Okay. Now we come in and give it to them like that. Oh, what is it? Oh, they want HTTP. Is it HTTPS? I think it's just HTTP. Okay, yeah, that's it. Oh, I'm not reading. They said and defang the URL. So we have uh, Cyberchef in its defanging phase. Let's just do that. These di people didn't even bother to put HTTPS on this. A PowerShell script was downloaded to the same location as the suspicious binary. What was the name of the file? Oh, this one I can actually have a little bit of leeway. So this was downloaded to the C Windows temp. I'm going to do something gross here. Hey, remember, I'm not an instant response responder and I've never been one. Don't quote me on this. I like attacking things. But let's do something start with PS1. It can be that easy, but hey, I'm not beneath trying. It's a PowerShell, so I know that it ends with the PS1. Uh, was it actually downloaded? It... Oh yeah, there it is. I just put it dot PS1. 
Uh, what do they want? What was the name of the file? This is called script.ps1. So PowerShell scripts is a PS1 extension. That's how I was able to get to it. The malicious script was flagged as malicious. What do you think the actual name of the script was? The malicious script was flagged as malicious. What do you think the name? Think? I don't have to think, do I? Is it this? Okay, so if they mean that the same file script.ps1 was flagged as malicious. Um, let's look here. We do have some hashes though. How do they know that it was flagged as malicious? Let's find out. Virus Toro. I'm just grabbing a random hash from it. Just to see if the hash is already flagged with Virus Toro. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is really bad. Oh, yeah, this is really bad. That's it. It is. It will be flagged as malicious. So let's go to its details. Uh, here's all the known hashes. Ah, the names. Okay, okay. There's 523.mau and blacksun.ps1. Is it this one? Blacksun.ps1. Oh, yeah, that looks like it. So we had to go to virus Toro and find out, or I, I don't know, maybe other ways. I was just, just checking to see if that was the malicious one or if there is the other one. A ransomware note was saved to disk, which can serve as an indicator of compromise. What is the full path to which the ransomware was saved? Okay. So we found out that this was uh, Blake's son. Uh, now we need to look for the file that was saved to disk. Let's be lazy. This one was a PS1. Files are usually text files. So give me all the text files. Okay, good. Uh, if I were putting ransomware, I'll probably be putting it on the desktop like this one. Oh, it's in the download. Target file. Users click and downloads uh, Black Sun readme.txt. That looks like an, a, an interesting one. Here's a third party notice that looks like a normal file. I just looked for text. I think it's this one. Because if I were dropping a not, I'll probably leave it as a normal file that can be read. What is the full path to which... Th oh, the one, the full path. Really? So the one, this whole thing here. Bingo. The script saved an image file to disk to replace user's desktop wallpaper, which can also be an IOC. What is the full path to the image? Okay, so we can check the... Oh, images are PNGs. I'm going to write on the same JPEG or PNG. A PNG, do we have any PNG? A target file, see, click and update uh, Microsoft SharePoint.png. It can be, let's see. The full path, this one doesn't look like it's that much. So if it's not a PNG, is it a JPEG? JPG? Yes, I see. See, use a public pictures. Black Sun. I guess we could have look, look at the name as well. This looks like the image to me. And the length looks right. All right, folks. A little change in pace here. As an attacker myself for work, uh, this is valuable. Uh, especially how they encoded the malware with Base64, then they encoded it just a little bit. And also, all these other investigations so i hope you learned something here please remember to like subscribe and share my videos with others we are almost reaching 100,000 subscribers if maybe by the time you're watching this video there's already 100,000 subscribers but please keep subscribing and i'm excited to see where we can go with this otherwise thank you very much for being here and i hope to see you next time